and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to look at performance evaluation, and it's going to be specifically for government, government performance evaluation. In the prior session, we looked at not-for-profit performance evaluation. And if you want to look at for-profit, I do have its, uh, its own recording. I'll put the link into the uh, description about for-profit and for not-for-profit. But in this session, we're going to be focusing on governmental entities. Now, when we start performance evaluation, a good way to start is to use common size, common size analysis. And what is common size analysis? Basically factoring the size out by using percentages, using ratios, uh, using vertical, horizontal analysis, so on and so forth. So financial ratios are used to convert information to more understandable form. What is a financial ratio? Financial ratio is X divided by Y. So basically taking two figures and dividing the figures by each other. The most straightforward form of ratio analysis is common size analysis. Basically, what we can do in a common size analysis, we could look at the whole financial statement as a whole, and we'll scale it back in terms of one important account. For example, if we're looking at the income statement, okay? Now, again, if we're using government, we we can say, you know, the statement of revenues and expenditure, whatever we want to do, but I'm, just, I'm, I'm gonna be using terminology that you're familiar with. So we're looking at revenue, and let's assume we have expenses, advertising expense. So let's assume advertising expense is 100, revenue is 1,000. So we'll take 100 divided by 1,000. We can say advertising expense is 10% of revenue. Or if we're looking at the balance sheet, we're looking at the balance sheet. We have assets on one side, liabilities, and fund balance or liabilities and equity on the other side. It doesn't matter. And we have $300 in supplies. And we have total of a thousand of current of 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 total assets 300 divided by a thousand we have 30 percent in supplies so basically it, it helps us factor the size out this way we can compare two companies regardless of how large they are once we compare them based on percentages they become comparable so items on the balance sheet are usually divided by total assets item on, items on the income statement or Operating statement are divided by revenues because revenue drives everything on the uh, statement of operating revenues and expenses. These amounts are compared to pr earlier years. So for ratios to make sense, you have to compare them to something else. You have to compare them to prior years, how, how, well, how well or how bad we were doing in prior years to see if we are improving or deteriorating. Or you can compare them to other competitors. Like for the government, you could compare them to another government that's similar of size and economic situation that yours. Now, this is basically a nutshell of financial statement analysis. If you go to my, if you go to the lecture, you'll have more, but this is not the purpose of it. Now we're gonna be selecting few uh, uh, ratios for government. But before we look at specific ratios, think about the government. What is the, what is the need for the government? Who looks at financial statement? Well, for one thing, citizens and voters, why? Because they vote, they vote you in, they vote you out. They want to see if you are using their tax dollar money efficiently and effectively. Another people that look at this is legislative and oversight officials. This way they know how to budget, where to spend the money, so on and so forth. Also, investors and creditors. I would not say we don't have any investors, mostly creditors, uh, people that... Uh, the people that uh, that lend money to the to the government governmental unit now investors could be if there's any a, um, a public uh, private project like basically part of it public part of it public private project part of it public part of it uh, private like maybe uh, on a highway you want to put a toll half 50 percent of the expenditure is financed by the public 50 percent is financed by private then you'll have investors but generally speaking we talked about creditors okay so what you can get the information about the financial statements you can get it directly from the government ask them for their CAFR report which we looked at we you could look at intermediary places where it's a newspaper radio a news program etc as the internet or you can get information from interest group or political parties but remember when it comes to newspaper radio shows political parties interest group they may select certain they may highlight certain things and ignore others basically to self-serve their purpose so be careful the best way when you want, when, you, when you want to look at financial statements for government go to the source ask them for the what's called the CAFR account the comprehensive annual financial report this is the CAFR, and we talked about it in details in another session. It's a major data force, data source for professional bond rating agencies. Who are the professional bond rating agencies? Moody, Standard & Poor's, Fitch, Investor Services. What do they do? These agencies, what they do is they study the financial statements of the government, 
And what they do is they rate it. And what is rating means? Rating means they, they might give you triple A, which is good. Double A is less than triple A or A is lower than double A. Then there's triple B, double B, B, and C. So the higher you're on that scale, the better is your financial position. How does that help? That's going to help you. If, you, if you're triple A in, in a government and you want to borrow money, you're going to get lower interest rate. So your interest rate is lower. Why? Because Moody's or Standard & Poor's or Fitch stated that you are, in, you are in a good financial position. Therefore, the investors are taking less risk. Therefore, you will, you will pay them lower return because they're taking lower risk. So it assists investors by rating bonds and other forms of debt. So this is what they do, those agencies. Why? Because think about it. You know, let's assume you want to buy the debt of your city or New York City or Philadelphia. Well, one way is to go ahead and study the study study them yourselves, which is going to take you a long period of time. Or you can go to those agencies and they already rated those government. So you could just basically decide if you want to lend them money or not. So it assists investors and here creditors by rating bonds. Again, investors is the wrong word because bonds is debt. So it's basically creditors or lenders. Okay, so rating agencies, not only they look at the CAFR, they look at a host of, of economic and demographic factors. For example, they would look at the overall economic situation in that region, on the East Coast, on the West Coast, and the South. For example, in the South, if it's oil and oil prices are going down, therefore, government in that area should do should not do as good. Or if oil prices are going up, they should do better. Demographic factor, are people moving in, people moving out? And the people who are moving in, are they high net worth people, let net worth people, so on and so forth. So they look at many things. Okay, And the government, they're very interested in their bond rating agencies because that's going to translate into either a higher or a lower borrowing cost. So yeah, if you have a better, if you have a better uh, position, your your cost of borrowing will go down. Now we're going to look at some common financial ratios that, uh, that that's used in government setting. The first one we're going to look at is um, it's uh, it's a government wide statement. We're used on a government wide statement, and basically we're going to take a look at unrestricted net position. What's unrestricted net position? It's basically the equity that you have that you could use for anything. And remember, unrestricted net position divided by total expenses of the governmental activities. Or we could look at this ratio from a fund position, unassigned fund balance. Remember, the fund balance will have unassigned fund balance, basically whatever we can do, divided by expenditure and other finances uses. So what do we do? Let's assume you have 100 versus 1,000. It means 0.1 or 10%. What does this measure tells us? It tells us the availability of resources to meet expenses. How much resources do you have to meet expenses? Now, let's assume we go from 100 to 300 divided by 1,000. Now, your ratio went up to 30%. Well, it increases. The larger this ratio, okay, the stronger is your financial condition. In other words, you have plenty of unrestricted net asset or net position in comparison to your total expenses. And the same concept applies to the general fund. The higher this ratio, the more un unassigned fund balance you have to relationship to your total expenditure and other finances uses, the better off you are, the better off you are. So this ratio could be calculated as again, government wide or fund or fund level. This is a measure of the availability of resources to meet expenses. Larger indicates stronger. Larger indicates stronger. Okay. Another ratio we can look at is the quick ratio. And the quick ratio is cash and current investments divided by current liabilities. And this ratio is also used in the private setting. In the private world, private companies do use this quick ratio. Basically, what, let's assume you have cash and current investments of 1,000 and current ratio of 500. That means equal to 2. Now, do you want this measure to be higher or lower? You want it to be higher. Let's assume you have 2,000 in the numerator, then the ratio equal to 4. You have more assets in relationship to your current liabilities. This measures this, this ratio measures the government ability to finance short-term obligation. Higher indicate you have more liquidity. Higher ratios, higher ratios indicate more liquidity, which is good. Liquidity means you have enough money to fund yourself in the near term. Near term. Solvency ratio, another ratio that deals with that, but it deals with leverage. Solvency ratios, here what you're doing is you're taking total liabilities minus the third outflow. You take the deferred outflow, okay? And you take divided by total asset minus the third inflow. So basically, total assets divided by total liabilities, and we are, should be familiar with this, we should not take into account the third 
inflow and deferred outflow because they're not really true assets and they're not really true liabilities. Okay, this is this tells us this should be measured on a government level uh, since the government fund do not report long-term liabilities. Again, this is a government-wide ratio because remember the fund financial statements don't report long-term assets, long-term liabilities. So what does it measure? It measures the proportion of the government assets that is financed with that. Let's assume you have, let's assume you have a 300 of current liabilities and 1,000 of assets. The ratio equal to 30%. What does 30% mean? It means 30% of your assets are coming from that. Okay. Let's assume we go from 300 to 100. 100 divided by 1,000 equal to 10. Now, only 10% of your assets are coming through that. So what you want, you want a smaller value indicated the greater solvency. Solvency means in the long term, you are in good shape because most of your assets, uh, your assets are financed less with debt. Okay, the higher this number, the riskier you are as a, as a government. And the riskier you are, if you are riskier, then your borrowing cost goes up. Your borrowing cost goes up. So you want this number to be low. Another similar ratio is called the solvency ratio. Um, a part of the solvency ratio is called the coverage ratio or the debt surface coverage. Okay, This is usually on an enterprise fund. Uh, uh, the information is coming from the enterprise fund statement of cash flow. We'll take cash flow from operation divided by interest paid and principal and payment of principal. So how much cash you are generating dividing that by interest paid and interest and, and principal payment. Let's assume you're generating $1,000 and your interest paid payment and your payment of principal is two, it means from from operating your cash, you can cover your interest and principal payment five times. Now, you could also compute this separately for the interest and separately for the payment of principal, but if we combine both, it just it doesn't matter. Again, you can break down this ratio into only, you know, cash flow from operation divided by interest to find out how much are we generating to interest or a thousand divided only by the payment. Regardless, it just tells us the same thing. How, how much of your operating cash flow covering interest or how much of your operating cash flow covering payment or here we're saying for both, you are cov covering this five times. I'm sorry, we, we said this two, five times. Now the higher, the better. Let's assume your ca operating cash flow is, is um, what did we say earlier? We said a thousand divided by uh, let's go back in. Sorry, uh, let's use the numbers again. We said a thousand divided by two hundred equal to five. Now, if you have two thousand coming from operating cash flow, then this figure equal to ten, which is you're in a better position. Okay, so this ratio indicate the availability of cash generated to meet current obligation. The higher, the better. You want this number to be high. Another ratio we can look at is debt service to total expenditure. Debt service to total expenditure here. We are dealing with the government, government, not the enterprise, basically. The principal and interest expenditure divided by total expenditure. How much of our expenditure and principal on the on the loan are part of the total expenditure? Okay, that's basically what we're looking. Uh, <clears throat> This information is drawn from the fund basis financial statement. Remember, because we are using the word expenditure, it's a measure of degree. It's a measure of the degree to which governmental expenditure are committed to debt service. So how much of our expenditure is committed to debt? Low value indicate greater flexibility. We want low value. We want 100 divided, 10 divided by 1,000. Or we want even 5 principal and interest divided by 1,000. Okay, so the lower the numerator in relationship to the denominator, the better off you are. So the lower, the more is the flexibility you have. All what you're doing here is you're comparing how much interest and principal represent of your total expenditure. Again, if we said 100 versus 1,000, that's 10%. I prefer 50 over 1,000, which is 5%. Okay, so you want this to be lower. Again, the lower means the less the less riskier you are. The less riskier you are means you have ability to pay off your debt. It means you can borrow the money at a lower rate. Another another ratio called ability to pay or debt per capita ratio. And this is basically it takes some non-financial figure with financial figures. Total liabilities divided by the total population. Let's assume we have a million dollar in total liabilities in total debt for this government and we have uh, let's make it simple 500,000 people in that in that city or in that in that town or in that you know state then it means two it means each person 
each person is basically is basically responsible uh, for two dollars in a sense in a sense now if the population is one hundred thousand now this ratio goes to 10 which means it means the population the citizens in that county they have more of a burden and if the population is a thousand as you can tell now they have a more of a burden each individual is responsible for a thousand so on and so forth now i'm only changing the population obviously if you change the liabilities if you increase the liabilities this would also increase okay so this should be a government wide uh, government wide ratio okay because reporting total liabilities total liabilities means you are looking at the whole financial statements measure measure of the government ability to service debt or incur additional debt low value indicate greater flexibility and ability to manage additional debt again the more the, the the higher this the lower this ratio the better off you are as a as a government okay now also again ratios you also have to take them within a context also if your population is a high net worth also you would look at this you would look if it's high net worth then you have you, you are in a better position to handle additional debt but if your population is not high net worth it means there's not good jobs in your area then you, so you cannot really compare the numbers without looking at other other issues as well okay another ratio ability to pay ratio is debt to assess um, uh, value of property basically taking debt again this is a government-wide if divide them by assessed value of property again let's use some numbers you have a million dollar of liabilities and you have your property value is is a million let's start with that that's equal to one what does one mean it's it's measuring the government ability to service that or incur additional debt now what you want you want your assessed property to be 10 million it makes this ratio equal to point one so you want to have more property value in relationship to your debt why and again um, lenders are willing to lend you more if you have basically more value in your county in your city in your township whatever you are whatever in government entity you are okay so if the, you want the value to be higher than the total liabilities okay again this is a government wide because we use total liabilities a measure of the government ability to service debt or incur additional debt low value indicate greater flexibility and ability to meet additional debt so basically hopefully we went through all these ratios just to give you an idea how does the government how can we evaluate the government position and again who looks at these ratios rating agencies why do they look at these ratios because they want to decide if they should lend you money if, if they, i'm sorry not the rating agencies they rate you they give you basically a rating a score then why is that important that's important for the government to have a good score because it's going to lower their borrowing cost if you have any questions any comments by all means email me or see me in class if you're studying for your cpa exam always 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 study hard it's worth it